in yeah. the track over two years, whether or not they're transitioning. My name's Associate Professor Rochelle Imey, and I'm from Federation University and Victoria University, and I work in sport participation research. Well, Australia is basically an inactive, uh, sedentary and overweight nation. Um, we have high rates of chronic disease, such as cardiovascular disease and diabetes, and we need to get people more active whether it's going for a run um, by yourself or taking the dog for a walk or playing sport, it, it doesn't matter from a health perspective as long as you're active. To strategically plan policies or participation programs in sport, you need to understand what's going on. So sport historically collects data on their individual players. So AFL would collect data on their AFL community club players, tennis on tennis players, netball on netball, um, for their registration purposes. But those sporting organisations are about delivering sport, they're not necessarily about analysing data. So Sport and Recreation Spatial has its own dedicated website um, and basically what we're doing is investigating sport and recreation participation facilities and health for evidence-based decision making. The Sport Spatial program brings together two aspects that are really important. The numbers of people participating and land use. So by starting to bring that that together uh, uh, in a GIS, we can actually see where um, uh, participation may be lagging because of a lack of, of facilities, where there's abundant facilities and usually high, high, um, uh, high rates of participation. So it allows us to visually explore that nexus between the provision of sport and re recreation facilities in the community and the levels of participation. Good data gives you um, good decision making power. Um, our planning needs to be around data. Um, sport relies heavily on funding. Um, we need to know what, who our members are, where, where we might be falling down. Um, sport Spatial in particular gives us an option to look at different levels, whether we're looking at um, a local government, a local association, um, up to, to bigger areas so that we can look at um, what's happening in a specific region, um, whether there's enough facility provision. So we integrate the data from a range of different sources um, and have a common template across the sports so that, as some sports say, it's a level playing field of reporting. We report on AFL the same as what we do for tennis and a lot of that's about age profiles, retention and dropout. So we provide individual reports for each sport but we also then, the state ministers and, and organisations that fund sport like Vic Health and Sport and Recreation Victoria are asking, well, how are we going across the sector? The data is really critical in understanding organised sport participation in Victoria. And for us, that's really important to understand who's playing sport, you know, their age, their gender, where they live. But also the flip side is, well, who's not? And how can sports engage more Victorians to play, particularly those less active or less engaged within their communities. You know, it's all about trying to get more people active in sport and sport and recreation spatial is not about delivering sport, it's about providing knowledge to those that do. Now with the membership data that Michelle's team have, that you, you can use some very powerful analysis of, um, of, of needs, community needs for facilities, for coaches, for officials and so forth. Now that's important for it because of the, um, I guess the social connectedness that sports play, the health benefits of participating in sport, but generally sport as a social movement as opposed to the industry part is about bringing people and communities together. Uh, I think that's the important part that, that we want to explore. And we know that in particularly rural areas the sporting club is usually the centre of the community. That's the hub. And so how we can better understand how we can grow that in regional areas and also the differences between regional and metro areas is so important to this research. There's always room for more collaboration because at the end of the day we're all trying to get kids and people active um, and we're no doubt facing the same barriers so anything that gets us together and talking about those is likely to be very useful. So this is um, totally innovative. It is the first time a database of community facilities has been uh, put together of this size and it's the first time that anyone's tried to collect large scale sport membership data, analyse it, clean it and then apply it in a spatial sense. So it's totally novel.